Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I can't believe I deleted that last video. I just spent six minutes recording something that I, at the end of that, thought to not be proper, and now I'm realizing that it was fairly good. See, I get stuck on my own blocks. I have my own um, baggage, and I'm sure you guys know that. But beyond that, the topic of this video is how saying no ruins your life. What does it mean to say no? No is resistance, conceptually, physically, or emotionally. Let's start with concept. When we try to resist something that we think is happening, whatever idea that might be, we naturally create physical tension and emotional tension, whether it be anger or grief in the sense of loss, or shame or guilt, these are all levels of resistances. And the mental is most obvious, because it's so magnified. And that's where the idea of no comes from. You get preoccupied with your idea of yourself, your sense of self. And then you get preoccupied with whatever the object it is that you're resisting. Let's say you have a goal and you initially interpret some situation as getting in the way of that goal. Why do we do this? We align our positivity, the joy in our present experience of our lives, to particular things, most often to our goals. And so when something seems to get in the way of that goal, we resist, we say no. An example would be trying to overcome an addiction to something. We see the beauty of reaching our potential in no longer being addicted to a certain substance. And of course, that's beautiful. And so our mind says, okay, let us not do whatever it is that we're addicted to. Logically, that seems fair, right? Well, when you consume energy resisting that particular practice, you're consuming energy. And emotion is your capacity for energy, for the harmonious flow of energy in the present moment. Think about when you're joyful or loving. These are extremely positive emotions and they have extremely high amounts of energy where you feel expansive, you're not contracting, and resistance is a level of contraction. Think about negative emotions themselves. Shame, guilt, fear, anger, pride, they're all levels of resistance, contraction. And so in the present moment, if you're trying to overcome an addiction or even a fear toward a particular goal in a practice that you're passionate about, well, resisting forcing, creating a level of tension, saying, I'm not going to do X, you've already entered a place in which you've lost your energy. And the beauty of life shrinks to whether or not you make this particular thing. You get attached, you become averse to all other outcomes, and life then becomes meaningless. Our felt sense of meaning comes from those high emotions, joy, love, fulfillment. And when we are fulfilled, is when we ultimately allow ourselves, allow, say yes to whatever is happening now in order for what happens next to manifest itself naturally. Life is like a river. It flows on its own. The more you do to force it in a particular direction that you so desire, to force it, not allow it, you can still go in the direction that you intend to go in as long as it's your heart's natural direction then that force, that contractive energy, only creates tension and gets you stuck. And so saying no in that way ruins your life. One of the biggest parts of what I teach people is allowance. Saying yes to whatever it is that's going on, even if it's something that you don't want to do, even if it's resisting itself. Because if you resist your resistance, then you can't let it go. Can't let it be. You can't let it spontaneously manifest into whatever is going to happen next. You get in a vicious circle. Don't be preoccupied with yourself. That's self-consciousness. Don't be preoccupied with resisting things that leads you to all your negative emotion. Allow. And then your creative potential will spontaneously manifest just like when you were a kid. And you can go into directions that you find most meaningful because they are the natural directions of your heart. 
And the most beautiful thing is you don't even need to let go of the things that you value. You dive deeply into them. And then whatever happens, happens. You may find that you value something else later. You may find that whatever it is that you were valuing, you didn't have to do other things in order to get to that particular point. You could just dive fully headfirst into it and ultimately experience, experience that joy. I'll end this with an anecdote. One time I was unemployed and I didn't have much money, maybe $400 in the bank account. And I tried to force myself to apply for a job. It was the thing that I thought I had to do when really all of my awareness, all of my guts and energy was pushing me in a different direction. It was pushing me in a direction of a particular girl who ultimately ended up being my girlfriend. Because that night when I was forcing myself to apply for these jobs, I almost had a panic attack. I was so tense in such a fight with myself that I couldn't let go. And I ultimately realized that I had to let go. And that night I let go so much that I ultimately fell in love and knew that she was the direction that I needed because she embodied a level of trust and love that I had never experienced before and gave me the strength to ultimately get a great job. It's the funniest thing. Our minds are so short-sighted, they don't often know what's best for us. Let your mind be a part of your heart. Say yes to life and whatever it is that's going on and it will make things so much more easy. You will never have to fight ever again. Best to you. Good luck.